Hey everyone, Laura Cameron Stedman here. Welcome to Mindset Jam. Mindset Jam. I don't know why I like that name so much. I think it's fun. It's all about mindset and a jam. And I've got a beaver for my logo, which is kind of because I'm Canadian, but also it's like a log jam and you're breaking up a log jam. And because jam's good. Who doesn't like good jam? And a jam is a chat as well, which is good. And it's also a musical thing, having a, going to have a jam. I'm going to go to jam night. I think it's fantastic. All right, what I'm going to talk to you about today, I'm not even going to wait for, like, stuff, people, because I know it's all weird times in the world right now. But I've just been watching a few things. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I freaking love, here's some people that I love and I follow a lot, and I love them uh, mostly. What, like, I love them, but I love what they say mostly, or I just have a slightly, little bit of something, something that I like that's a little bit different than what they say. Gary Vaynerchuk. I love Gary Vaynerchuk. I think he's fantastic. Here's the things that I love about him. I love that he's all about, that he talks about kindness um, I think that is really important, and especially when you're in this kind of position when you're t when you're trying to help people to um, find their best life and like do the best thing. And the best thing, though, doesn't mean the best thing for other people. It means the best thing for you, and that's um, what I think a lot of people have a hard time with. So this is what I want to talk about, Stop how to stop giving a rip what people think about you. And that is, that also kind of blends in with the thing I just said. Why? Because if you care what people's opinions of you are, you're not going to be doing the best thing for you. You're going to be doing things based on what you think you should do so that other people will say you're doing a good thing. Now, uh, some of you might be like, but they could be the same thing, but that's a defense mechanism that jumps in to make you just do the things that you think you should. I'm not talking about being a douchebag. I'm not talking about breaking the law. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about just being the person you are supposed to be, the person who's doing the things you love. What do you love doing? Like, that is what you should be doing. And we don't do that because we're worried about what people will think about us because it's all about money. And we are like we think it, prestige, money, if we have something, you know, the best car, the best life, the best house, the best whatever, people are going to like us more. People are going to accept us. They're going to approve of us. So that's what, we're, that's what we chase. I'm all about chasing the thing you love to do. Like not the end result, but the actual thing that you like to do. For example... I always loved music, singing, playing the guitar. I'm not very good at playing the guitar. I am working on that, but it's, I love it. I love doing that stuff. I loved pottery. I was really, uh, I used to be a potter and it was really great. I loved doing that. But what I'm talking about is doing stuff that you love for work. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be broke. Like if you're a musician or a potter, you're probably like not going to make as much money as you would as a lawyer, but you're going to be way happier. But I'm not talking about, this is why people equate doing things that they love with being completely broke, and that is not true. But anyways, how not to care what people think. I'm just going to give you some techniques because here's what I want. I want you to be able to do the stuff that I can help you with. I just want you to be able to do it. So here is one technique that I'm going to tell you about. And it is called hovering. Now, I've named it hovering. Here is what you do. It's sort of an NLP style technique. You, it's really easy and really simple. And if you think about it like, uh, I'm a real, sh I'm very short. I'm five foot one, 154 centimeters if you are in, using metric. And I'm very, I'm shorter than everybody. Like there's not that many people who are shorter than me. And it's kind of, you know, one of those things when you meet up with people who are taller than you, there is a, there is a tendency for the person who's taller to kind of look down and be like, <laughs> pat on the head, little person, <laughs> patronizing a little like bullshit, stuff like that. So using that, 
the idea of that. Because when you're in that position, you feel like you're less because you're shorter and they feel like they're better than you or more because they're taller. So what you can do using that as your base, if you imagine that you are bigger than them, it's really easy. All you're doing is hovering. You're just like pulling yourself up and you're just looking at them from above. So you're looking at them. If it helps, look at them from like you're laying on a cloud and you're looking through a hole in the clouds and they're there. Or in the same room, you're going up and you're looking down, looking at them and being above them. This is not so you can be a douchebag. This is not so you can like be a jerk. This is just so that you can feel like there's a bit of separation between you and that person, especially if they're making, you know, if you think what they think is going to affect the decisions that you make because you want them to approve of you. You're seeing them in a sort of mentor position or a parent position or, uh, you know, what they think matters to you, you're looking up at them. So if you can see them in a downward, like if you can look down at them and see that they are not, you know, it doesn't matter what they think. They think what they think. The other thing is, especially when you have a group of people that you're worried about what they think and putting them down in that position and just allowing all of the shit to happen down here, all of the fighting, all of the crap. I come from a family, like my relatives are like all that stuff. It's seriously, the stuff that's happened in my family could most definitely be a Jerry Springer episode. And so it's like, it's just all the stuff. And I find for myself. So these are the things that I've done for myself to help me to escape that sort of um, mentality just to get out of that I need to behave in a certain way I have to be a certain type of person that actually isn't me like the person that I was supposed to be wasn't me the person that it was like you need to be this in order to um, for us to approve of you and it's actually not who you are uh, so but we don't care you're gonna be like this you're gonna be like you know another person you're going to um, I need you to be uh, uh, behave in a way that makes me look good you're gonna do it and so when you have that situation where you where it's like you need to be somebody that you're not otherwise there will be consequences you bring that with you and I'm not about telling the stories about, like, I'm not about staying in that spot. I'm about helping people to move out of that spot. And a lot of times what that means is getting away from people who are toxic. Getting away from people who think that you're a piece of crap. Who think that you are a loser and you're always going to be a loser. And so the, the things that we need to do in order to you know, make sure that you have a good life is to make sure that you can, you know, do, do things like cook and clean so that, you know, so that some guy will take pity on you and maybe marry you so that at least you'll be safe because you're obviously a fucking loser. Like those are the things I'm talking about. When you have those things in your head, like you will never be have any worth whatsoever and I hate the word worth because it puts outside it makes it outside of you um, I hate the word worth um, but you know what I mean that's what you feel like you feel like I need to be a certain way that isn't who I really am if you've grown up like that if you have those feelings if you're like I know that I can do so much if I could only get out of my own way this is what I'm talking about. If I could only get out of my own way, and getting out of my own way means not worrying about what people think about me, and just getting out there and freaking doing it. So, hovering is a great way to start off doing that. Now, here's some other things that you can think about. So hovering, just putting yourself visually in a higher position than, than the people who are, uh, that you're worried about. And also turning the volume down. 
Now that's an NLP style technique. It's not one that I actually learned when I was doing my NLP practitioner training, but it's one that it sort of, it takes some of the concepts and it just changes it a little bit. Turning the volume down, turning the senses down when it comes to the things that are worrying about you, uh, worrying you about what might happen. Now here's the other thing I wanna talk to you about. Why do people even say these things? If you can think about it from the other person, like why, what's causing them to do this stuff? It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. And here's one other thing. I don't believe in uh, how so many people are, talk about forgiveness and, talk, and that you can't go forward until you've forgiven and all that. That's bullshit. You can totally get on with your life and move forward no matter, like, if you've had trauma and you've had different things that have happened to you, that really sucks. And I've had lots of trauma in my life and I totally understand and it really sucks and it does stop you from doing stuff sometimes. But don't use that stuff as a reason for your fear of going forward because that's what we do. And that's what I do. That's what I've done for a really long time. You know, I had this, this, this the fear of, fear of doing all this stuff and using what's happened to me in the past and all the trauma that I've gone through as an excuse not to go, not to move forward. So you can move forward and do stuff and still have this stuff and still have the shit. You can still have it. And I'm not going to help you with that. That's not my specialty. And I think those are things that need to go to somebody who really uh, has an understanding of how those things can work together. What I can help you with, though, is moving forward. Becoming the person who has the stuff you want. Becoming the person who is, uh, I believe in kindness, like I said at the beginning who's kind, who is, unless you're not kind, totally be whatever you want, but I, t I believe in kindness, who is, but is doing the thing, doing the thing that is what makes them happy, like doing the thing that you would do, and I know people say this, the thing that you would do even if you weren't getting paid for it, but you can get paid for it, it doesn't matter what it is, it, it totally doesn't matter what it is, whatever you can do, like if you're like, I could do this for 12 hours a day. I could do this for 18 hours a day and I would be totally fine. My time would go really quickly because I love doing it. That's what you should be doing. And even if you have to, you know, have spend less money, totally do it. If you have to take a couple steps backward to go to, you know, to take, you know, one step back, two steps forward, totally cool. That's what you should do. The car you drive, the house you have, like all your stuff, those things are filling a void. They're filling a void and they're all about having other people, um, having other people approve of you so you feel good. I help people feel great no matter what. You look in the mirror, you feel freaking amazing. You dress in a way that makes you feel amazing because it's you. You're dressing like you. You're dressing like you're not doing the thing that, especially women, I think we do this a lot. Women do this a lot where we downplay. We downplay. We settle. We settle for less. We settle for, and that includes, and I'm sorry, sorry ladies, but that includes, um, you know, dressing like in a way that doesn't make you feel good. This is not about other people. This is not about, oh yeah, well, you should be, you know, approving of me wearing blah, blah, whatever, because I've got a really hard life and I like, you know, have 10 kids and I'm like, what? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about external approval. It's not about external at all. It's about you. It's about if nobody else was alive, you're by yourself, nothing else. How would you dress? That would make you feel fantastic. Here's a thing. Watch Stacy London. This is what, like, seriously, she's one of my heroes. I freaking love her. 
watch stuff from Stacey London and she was on TLC's What Not to Wear and she was on the um, uh, Love Luster Run which is a, diff a different one which is basically the same premise but it's a fun show. Watch those things. This is what I'm talking, I liked it, her premise for the whole, your whole life. And the premise for that show is, is taking what you are, who you are, what you love, and expressing that on the outside through what you wear. So it's taking people who are like, almost like defensive people who are like, I am myself and I, you're not, and taking the defensiveness away and just making it an offensive move, not a defensive move going, yes, this is when you're done working with her, you're like, this is actually me. I don't have to be defensive of what I'm doing because I'm actually, you got my style, like my, who I am, the essence of me. This is exactly it. And I feel confident and I feel fantastic and I can go out in this and be myself and be me and I don't need to compare myself to anybody and I don't you know see somebody else wearing you know something else and I'm jealous because I feel like they this is the thing with the jealousy especially when it comes to women you see some someone wearing a really fantastic outfit you're not jealous of the outfit you're jealous because you can tell that they feel good and you don't that's it this is what I help you with. Feeling good in your life, what your choices are, doing what you love, dressing so you feel great. If you want to be in, uh, if you want to be more fit, if you don't, if you're like, oh, I hate my body, it sucks. I do not, I do not teach people to say, you know what, I'm just going to learn how to love my body the way it is. I don't do that. You do need to love your body. And here's how you love your body. You listen to it and you go, what does my body need? I love my body. It needs to exercise. It needs food that is healthy. It needs to feel like I love my body. Not, I'm just going to say I love, you know, I'm going to learn how to love where I am and sit back and do sweet F.A. And I'm going to make other people approve of me so I feel better. That's what we do. We go, you need to change so I feel better. Nobody else needs to change so you feel better. You need to go, what do I need to do to make me feel freaking amazing? What do I need to do to my body? What do I need to do to what I'm, with what I'm wearing? What do I need to do in my job, in my career, in my life? That is what you need to do. And when you can do that, you won't care what people think because you feel fantastic. This is what I do. I help women feel fantastic about, about their life because they're actually being the person that they are. The person that maybe got lost when you didn't fit into somebody else's mold that you stopped being, that you put on a mask that was somebody that's like what somebody else uh, wanted you to be you you're pleasing somebody else you've put this mask on it's not you at all and you've been wearing this mask for like forever and you feel miserable but it's like well you need to earn this much money and you need to like do this and this and this to make other people happy so I help people I help women take the freaking mask off and not care what people think be able to go out there like this. See, I'm go all over the place, and I do that. I'm a tangent queen, and I do say that a lot, but I am. I'm a tangent queen, and I've just psh, that's me. So yeah, here's what I've learned: music, singing, different stuff. The reason I haven't been doing that is because I've learned that. There's two parts to me. There's a rebellious part and a, re and a part that conforms. And I hate the conforming part. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, get a little bit more control over that one. But when other people in my, well, when my family, have, you know, was like, oh, music, it became this like thing a, and a, a way to control what I was doing, a way to make them look better 
a way to like, yeah. And I just, I don't like that. I don't, I'm not, I'm not interested in people um, hovering over me. Hovering, yeah, over other people in your visualization, that's totally cool, but not actually hovering. I'm gonna tell you something. At a family reunion, my, and this happened all the time, my cousin was like, why is your mother hiding in the bushes? True story, true story. Um, and she gave my sister, who was 32 years old at the time and had a teenage son, that she had a 10 o'clock curfew when they came to, to the cruise ship I was working on when my husband and I got married. 10 o'clock curfew. And then they had big fights when she didn't obey. So breaking out of that like control, weird, like weird, weird control freak thing um, has been part of my journey. And it's something that I've fought with quite a bit because, you know, it was instilled from when I was young. But yeah, this is what I help people with. How to not care what people think to actually get out there. And this is the other thing. A lot of people do this. They go either, they're like, I don't want to be a people pleaser. And instead, they're a people spiter. So they do the opposite of what somebody would want them to do in order to please them. I want you to be an accountant. I'm not going to be an accountant. I'm going to be a musician. Ha, 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 ha. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about focusing on what is actually your, 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 like, what were you, what are you here for? What are you meant to do? What, and you know what you're meant to do because it's the thing that you could do for 18 hours a day and like time just goes and you're just like, and then you could do it again the next day. And then you could do it again the next day. And it doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Anyway, I've been on here for a while, so. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that and if you have any questions that I can help you with about not caring like how to not care what people think this is the bane of society I think like just people caring way too much what people think feeling like you have to earn a certain amount of money because somebody's not gonna you know so that people wow this whole time I've had a wine bottle right in my thing it's an empty wine bottle Anyway, I like wine. Hey, wine. Anybody who knows me will be like, that is a perfect thing to have in your video. Yep. Um, how to not care what people think. I love helping people with this because it is a huge deal. And I'm going to do some more videos on it. And I'm going to do some more writing on it. And I'm just like, yeah, how to not care what people think and how to like move towards the thing you're supposed to be doing, what you're here for. Fantastic. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Laura Cameron Stedman. Hope to see you next time on the Mindset Jam. I need to come up with a song. So if anybody wants to um, uh, send me some, you know, sound clips, Mindset Jam, that'd be fantastic. Make like, make Mindset Jam, but like, I don't know, it'd be fun. Thanks.